Hello, my name is Joe Sandwich. I'd like to take you to the park if you sell in the garden. Joseph Slotnick was just three years old when spinal meningitis robbed him of the ability to hear. It was the 1930s. He lived in Houston, Texas, with his father Morris, mother Esther, and sister Jane. Hi, of course. My name is Frank B. Devin. My parents were in prison in Malta. But they researched the, the later issues that was available at that time and decided to bring me in a school for the deaf in Northampton, Massachusetts. Slotnick was sent across the country to attend the Clark School for the Deaf, one of the nation's only schools for the deaf and hard of hearing. His parents were told to sever all contact with their son. The thinking at that time was mother, father, and family should be kept out of the picture. It was very difficult for the family. My mom took it upon herself to rent the room near the school campus. I didn't know about it. I was going every day and watched me and my school practice as a little boy. So I put my mama. After graduating from eighth grade, Slotnick entered a private high school for hearing students. He was immediately advanced to his sophomore year. I was there for three years and I graduated fourth to the class of 28. From there, I went to Harvard. With the support of his father, a mathematician and Harvard graduate, Slotnick learned to navigate the university without the help of note-takers or interpreters. My dad was also with the Board of Overseas to overlook the mathematics department. So he came to the college once a year. And he found out there were only four other deaf people like me who had been to Harvard. So that made me a fifth person to have a to Harvard. People asked me how to do it. My own answers, I don't know. Slotnick's involvement with technology for the deaf community paved the way for him to connect with a woman named Mary, the mother of a deaf child. We met in Massachusetts. He was living in Massachusetts, and he was California. Uh, well, one thing led to another, and we were communicating cross country through a primitive form of electronic men. The couple wed in 1982 and continued to help advance opportunities for the deaf and hard of hearing through their support of the Silent Garden at Fresno State. When we first talked about an endowment with the Silent Garden, I was so thrilled that there would be another professor like my wonderful Dr. Ludeman. I don't know what I or other mothers at that age, at way back, would have done without his guidance, his, his encouragement, his knowledge. He was one of the first professors in ology who opened up not just his ears, but his heart for the emotions that are felt. I hope the Silent Garden will provide that for many parents out there.
Thanks, bye. Hey, hey, bitch, it's got me, me. You're supposed to sign in, can't you? So then, parents, I've tried it hard if it is something without the things to work with. You have to have a tough challenge. 